Hi, my name is Christian Newman, uh, CT Newman, and this is my 8-valve ULH. So what I did is I took a set of 1939 ULH cases, and then inside of it I put knucklehead flywheels, custom connecting rods, Evo pistons, then I put panhead cylinders on it, and then everything from the head gasket up I made from scratch, and it's got eight valves, so four valves per cylinder. The rocker arms kind of cross over each other, so this is actually the push rod for the intake valves, this is the push rod for the exhaust valves, and then the rocker arms actually kind of overlap each other. The rocker pivots themselves are fully lubricated, and it's not total loss. There's, there's a feed that comes up through the cylinder, uh, the oil flows down the length of the rocker uh, and then drains through the normal cylinder drains onto the piston skirts. Um, so it, it'll run for a long time. The uh, uh, tappet to valve interface, both of those are uh, above 65C Rockwell, so they should be pretty wear resistant. It's twin turbo, twin carb, foot clutch, hand shift. This is the brake, but you can flip it up to become the Kickstarter. I took the Kickstarter totally off the transmission and I attached it to the frame. And then, so that is connected to a shaft that comes across the bike. And there's a gear mechanism on this side. There's actually a chain inside of the primary belt and that's part of the kickstart mechanism. It's actually a standard Harley four speed that I've removed the kicker from. I put a real long main shaft in it from a like a later shovel head and I put that in a pan head case and what that allows me to do is offset my chain line. That's why I can get away with having such narrow axle plates is because the transmission is actually offset in more. When I build an exhaust that's got to fit really tight like this, every single piece before I go to the next piece, I fully weld it so that it doesn't shrink. Like I, can't, I don't tack all my stuff together I fully weld it, move to the next piece, fully weld it, move to the next piece. Sometimes that's a problem because you start there and you end up there and then you wind up, well, okay, that's not gonna work. That looks stupid. So you kind of wind up with a lot of scrap, but if you want something that's gonna fit really tightly and like be the same when you tacked it as when you finished it, that's the only way to do it. Everything that's shiny on here is stainless. Um, there's no chrome except for the jugs and the fork spring. Yeah, the front end also stainless and it's actually, it looks like a girder, but it's actually a springer. These rods actually drive this port part right here. So when it hits a bump, this part moves up and down and that's what's compressing my, my fork springs. I spend a ton of time doing design work. Uh, so before I touched any steel for the engine or any, any metal, I had 500 hours into the design. Probably more than some people spend on a whole build, I had spent just in design work on this engine. I don't 100% know in advance how every little piece is going to be, but I would say from my original concept to where it ended up, yeah, it's pretty, pretty dang close. You know, there's, there's certain things that you kind of have to figure out as you're going. But overall, the, the major design elements are, are exactly what I wanted. I haven't ridden it a lot. I've ridden it around the block a couple times. Uh, I wanted to kind of take it on some shows first. Like, I won't take a bike to the show that's not rideable and not running. Uh, so I have to make sure that it runs. But also, I don't feel like cleaning it and doing all that. So yeah, it's totally runs, rides. It's actually very easy to ride. Wide bars, like nice, easy to use controls, like really pretty easy to ride. I haven't dynoed it. I, all, all I know is that when I was setting up the wastegates, I set them up to be fully open at six PSI. Uh, so I, at this point, it's just a butt dyno and I haven't even whaled on it. Uh, but you can definitely feel turbo spool and it starts to go, but I've just kind of chickened out because can't take a balled up bike to a show. <laughs> inspired by Shovelhead, kind of inspired by K-Model even, because K-Model kind of had like that taper. Um, so yeah, I, I wanted it to look Harley-esque from far away, but 
um, you know, up close be like, okay, that's obviously something that's a little bit unusual. Yeah, I don't know. I just like building goofy stuff and this seemed kind of goofy, to, to seem like a goofy idea, so I just went with it.